Hi, my name is Aaron. I'm the product head of Nutri Worldwide Inc. My team has to work closely with the manufacturing team. Recently, we've been receiving bulk orders, and that's when problems started. While performing a random audit, I found that there is a serious lack of collaboration between the product and the manufacturing team. When I discussed this with our tech team, they suggested that we install Salesforce to overcome this. That's a very logical suggestion, Aaron. You should consider it seriously. Before placing a requisition for installing Salesforce, I wanted to check whether it will alleviate the issue. Frankly speaking, I cannot waste any more time on this. The productivity of my team has decreased sharply due to this lack of information. Salesforce Chatter will be perfect for your solution. It will help your team members collaborate better with emails, updates, posts, video links, and groups. Chatter allows for teams to create private groups for collaborating on certain topics, such as product development, while also allowing public groups to discuss topics, such as where to arrange an office party. Replies to posts via email make this an even easier tool to use when tied in with approvals and feed posts. Salesforce Chatter helps with interdepartmental communication as well. Let me show you some amazing features of Chatter in this lesson. Sure, let's start. Our first topic will be a Chatter overview. The following are a few facts about Chatter. Chatter is a Salesforce application that enables users to connect and report activities within their company. Every organization has 5,000 free Chatter licenses. In Chatter, every user has a profile page with a photo and work-related information. People can follow each other, form groups, follow records, and tasks in Chatter. Chatter provides instant chat, messaging, and record sharing. So let's talk a little bit more about each of these points. Chatter is built right inside Salesforce, and if you see the screenshot on the right-hand side, you can see it common, and you also have the ability to upload files and links and take a poll. It really enables users and even outside users that have access to collaborate inside Salesforce. So you get 5,000 free Chatter licenses. You can give those licenses to anyone inside or outside of your organization. The only thing they can do with it is, you know, access Chatter. But it does give you the ability to give others, you know, a voice in the conversation you might not otherwise be able to. Also in Chatter, you have a profile page similar to other social media sites. You have the ability to post your picture, your email address, phone number, and any other work-related information like your title or the department you work in. You can also follow other users. So if you're interested in the posts from specific users, you can follow them. You can also form groups. So a common use case would be a new product idea group or new feature request group, or it can even be an informal group like where should we go to lunch or where should we have the company party. You can also follow records and tasks, and we'll get to that a little bit later on here in this lesson. And uh, you can also make use of the instant messaging through the instant chat, direct messaging, private messages, and record sharing inside of Chatter as well. So let's jump into Salesforce and just see a basic Chatter page. So I'm logged into Salesforce and I'm on the Chatter tab here. So to see this page, you'd simply click Chatter and it'll take you to the Chatter page for the entire company. So we're gonna talk about each of these areas more specifically here in a few minutes, but just for as far as an overview is concerned, you can see here that you can have running conversations with others in the organization on different records. You can upload files, post links. You can even put out a poll, uh, such as, you know, where should we order company lunch? And then over on the left-hand side, you can send messages directly. You can see, um, you know, any messages directed to yourself from others. You can also see people and groups within the organization as well. So in this lesson, we'll talk about all these uh, more in depth. But as far as an overview is concerned, this is sufficient. So you can see here that, you know, Lissette posted to this All Cloud Creations group uh, a file. So uh, very basic overview, and you can get this as well from your home page. So if you click on the Home tab, you can see if your Chatter feed is open, you can see the Chatter feed there. Let's talk about enabling Chatter in Salesforce. So keep the following points in mind when enabling Chatter. If your organization wants to use Chatter, it will be enabled for all users. 
It cannot be added to select groups and enabling chatter will also enable global search. So what that means is chatter is all or nothing for your company. If one of you or some of you want to use chatter and not the rest, if you turn it on, it's turned on for everybody. Now you can take steps to mitigate it. You can hide it. You can remove the tab and do a few other things such as disable the email. But once you turn on chatter, it's on for everybody. You also can't add it to select groups. So you can't create a specific group and just enable it for that. And also a lot of Salesforce customers like the global search function, this global search bar. That's actually part of chatter. So, well, I should say it's tied to chatter. So if you want the ability to use the global search, you're going to have to enable chatter as well. Let's jump into Salesforce and look at the steps for enabling chatter. So we're in the setup area of Salesforce. I clicked on setup and then over here on the left hand side, I went under customize all the way down to chatter settings. And then up at the top, you can see the enable checkbox is not checked. Now, for those of you that have just recently purchased Salesforce, this is gonna come enabled by default. However, if some of you have purchased Salesforce prior to Chatter being rolled out a few years ago, you're gonna to need to take these steps. So first, I'm gonna check this enable checkbox, and it's gonna show me a bunch of other options here. So we'll talk about all of these here in a few minutes, but essentially all of your Chatter settings are found on this page. So at this point, you've checked the enable checkbox, and click save and it's going to enable chatter for your organization. So once that's done, you'll see it's grayed out, but you can always come back and click edit if you want the ability to disable chatter. So that's your option there. The next thing we're going to talk about is enabling chatter feeds on records. So I'm logged into Salesforce back in the setup area. I clicked on setup. I scroll down. And on the left hand side, I expanded chatter and I clicked on feed tracking. So I'm going to scroll back up and now I have the ability to track all of these different fields. So let's talk for a minute about feed tracking. So with feed tracking in Salesforce, you have the ability to turn on and turn off fields that are show that show up in chatter. Users can enable these feeds on objects and different records. Users can see updates for the objects and records they follow in their chatter feed. So many objects and fields are also tracked by default and it can be customized to include or exclude fields. So let's jump back into Salesforce and see this last point here. So if you see over here on the left hand side, we have a list of all of the objects in Salesforce. We have uh, custom objects, standard objects as well. So you can see here account. Everybody knows what the account is, so let's use that one as an example. So here you can see that I've enabled feed tracking on accounts, and we have two fields that we're tracking. Now let's say I want to track something else. Let's say I want to track company email. I can check that checkbox and click save. Now what that's going to do is it's going to give me the ability to see a change made to that field right inside of chatter. So let me jump over here to this new account. I'm going to click on show feed. We don't see any updates in the chatter feed. So let's say I want to come over here and I want to put in an email for this particular account. So I'm going to click save. So as you can see that change to the company email field was now posted to the chatter feed. So with feed tracking, you have the ability to post changes to fields right inside of chatter. Now let's say I don't want that. I'm going to come back over here, uncheck that company email checkbox and click save. Now once my changes have been saved, I'm going to go back to the account and let's say I'm going to change this to something totally different as a test. And I'm going to click save. So you can see that I made my change, but it did not post that change to chatter. The reason is, is because I disabled that field from the chatter feed options here in the setup area. So only check the checkboxes of the fields that you want tracked. So you can choose any of these campaigns, cases, contacts. You have the ability to choose up to 20 different fields. Now, something to keep in mind is that you want to keep your chatter feed as relevant as possible. 
So what that means is if you start selecting every field that's available, that might seem like a great idea, you know, you being very thorough. The reality is the more you have in the chatter feed, the more difficult it is to understand if the posts in the feed are relevant or not. So you really only want to focus on the fields that are most relevant. For example, you might not even care about the fields on account, but maybe you want to focus on like opportunities or contacts. Let's say someone's title change um, on a contact. So maybe you want to track that. Or you could jump over to opportunities and say, you know, I want to track the close date. So here we're tracking the close date already on opportunities and chatter. So every time the close date changes, that gets posted to chatter. So that sounds like a good idea, but changing, you know, or tracking the phone number field on a contact, it's probably not necessary and it's just gonna sort of clutter up your chatter feed. So those are some important considerations when enabling feed tracking. The next thing we'll talk about is configuring chatter groups. Keep the following points in mind when configuring chatter groups. Chatter groups are the main area in chatter where people share information, post updates, and ask questions. Configuration can add features for archiving, unlisted groups, and records in groups. So inside of Salesforce, you have this groups option. And um, like I've talked about before, groups can be used to organize discussions. That can be a discussion on everything from the latest movie that's come out to feature requests or new product ideas. It can be anything. So groups in Salesforce allow you to, you know, make sure that conversations stay on topic on a per group basis. So let's jump into Salesforce and see groups in action. So I'm logged into Salesforce and I've clicked on my chatter tab here. Now on this chatter feed, I can look over here on the left hand side and I have the ability to create a group. So I've clicked on group and I see I've got this new product ideas group set up. So I'm gonna click on it. So I've clicked on new product ideas and you can see I've got an image here and I don't have any posts in this group yet. What I can do is I can add members so I can search for people at my organization and add them. And uh, once that happens, they'll get an invite to join the group and then I can post product ideas here. So I can share that post to the group. I can also add topics. So I can, uh, you know, essentially use hashtags to organize my individual posts, or I can just leave it without a hashtag at all. And, uh, you know, the group will know that this group is just for those ideas. Now here I can click on group settings and I can see some of the different settings that I have here. So I can see whether it's a public or a private group. I can also choose whether or not I'm gonna archive this group or don't automatically archive the group. And the idea behind archiving is that sometimes you create a group for a one-time purpose, but then once it's created, nobody's using it anymore, it's automatically gonna get archived. So that, that's what that's about. You also have the ability to delete the group, but for now, I'm just gonna click cancel and take us back to this page. So this is essentially how groups work. You have to add uh, individuals to participate in the group, and uh, anyone that does not have access to the group is not gonna be able to see those conversations. So the next thing we're gonna talk about here is creating customer groups. Keep the following points in mind when creating customer groups. Users can invite customers to groups that they own and manage. Customers can see information only in groups they are invited to and can interact only with members of those groups. So what this means is if you create a customer group and you allow others to join the group, you're only gonna be able to see the information in that group. You're not gonna be able to see any information outside of the group. However, if someone from the group posts some confidential information to the group, of course you're gonna be able to see that as well. So it's an important consideration that as a Salesforce administrator, if you're creating a private group and you wanna allow customers into the group, they're gonna be able to see everything that you post in there. So let's jump back into Salesforce and create a customer group. So I'm back into Salesforce, I've clicked on the chatter tab, and now I want to create a new group. 
So I'm going to click this new group button here. So I'm going to call this new customer group to make it painfully obvious. And then down here, I'm actually going to choose private. And then it's going to give me the option to allow customers to join the group. So now I'm going to click allow customers and save. What it's going to do now is it's going to prompt me to make sure that I really want to allow external customers to see and be invited to this group. At this point, I'm going to click OK. So I now have my new customer group. So if I want to invite people, I can click on Add Members or this Invite People option. So here I can put in the email address of the individuals, customers or otherwise, that I want to invite to this group. I can also add people a little bit more automatically. I can scroll up and down the list of users and add them as well. But it's really just a matter of clicking this invite people, putting their email address in their in a message in here and sending, and they're going to get an email that's going to allow them to register for a chatter license. And then when they log into Salesforce, they are going to be taken directly to chatter where they're going to see this group and be able to post to this group and see any other posts in the group as well. Now, an important consideration is that once you create a customer group, you can't change it to public or unlisted. It's essentially locked as far as these gr the group access settings go. So when you create your customer group, just know that you're not going to be able to ever roll it back. You're, gonna ha you're, you're essentially stuck with the options that you chose the first time around. So if you want to create a group and you're not sure if you want to make it a customer group, just create it as a public group first, wait and see, and then you can always change it to a customer group later. The next thing we're going to talk about is creating a free customer chatter user. The chatter free license is for users who don't have Salesforce licenses. Chatter free can access items such as people, profiles, groups and files, but they can't access any Salesforce objects or data. Chatter free users cannot see tabs. They can be a chatter moderator. So let's jump into Salesforce and see this in action. So we're logged back into Salesforce and I'm back at this new customer group that I pre created just a few minutes ago. So there's two ways to create a free chatter user. First is the option I demonstrated previously. I can click on this invite people link and I can put in email addresses and it's going to send them an invite to register for chatter. The other option is I can actually go to the user area and over on the right hand side I can choose chatter free and then make the profile chatter free user. And then I can put the information here that's relevant on the left hand side and click save and this person's going to get an email notification letting them know they now have a free chatter license. Now if you're unsure of how many chatter free licenses you have or have left, you can always click on the company information link. And on the company information page, you can scroll down and you can see you have 5,000 chatter free licenses. So um, that way you always know exactly how many chatter free licenses you have available. Our next topic is going to be customizing chatter email notifications. Keep the following points in mind when customizing chatter email notifications. Chatter email notifications can be customized to show the sender information and the company logo in the footer. Email settings can be configured on a personal or group basis. So this is an important area of Salesforce because Users, some users really like to get emails of everything that's going on in Chatter, and then others don't want any emails at all. So this topic is around the idea that some people will want emails, some people won't, and as, a, as an administrator of the system, you have the ability to control that. So let's actually, actually look at some of these settings in Salesforce. So I'm in the setup area of Salesforce, and I got here by clicking on setup in the top right hand corner, scrolling down and I opened up chatter and then email settings. And then back up at the top, I see here I have a bunch of different email settings. For starters, I can allow emails or disallow them. So if I turn them off, that means that nobody's gonna get chatter emails from Salesforce, but I'm gonna turn that on. 
The next one here is allow email replies. So this is actually a pretty neat feature where if someone's mentioned in a chatter post, they're going to be able to respond right from an email in their inbox. They won't even have to log into Salesforce to do it. So I'm going to check that checkbox because we want email replies to be available. We also want to allow posts via email and allow attachments via email. So you have the ability to restrict all of this, but we're going to turn all of this on. So what this does is it gives the users the ability to actually control which chatter emails they receive and which emails they don't. Now to demonstrate this, I'm going to jump over to my settings area and actually see what options I have available. So here you can see manage my chatter email notifications and I'm going to click email notifications. So as you can see on this screen, you have the ability to choose when you get an email, when you don't get an email, or if you want to receive any emails at all. So let's say, for example, that I don't want to get an email whenever someone shares a post I just made. I can uncheck that checkbox there. And likewise, for comments or mentions, messages, or endorsements, I have the ability to control whether or not I get an email when this stuff happens. I can also control when I get a personal digest. So Salesforce will send you an email recap of any conversations that were had during the day if you choose that daily option. Or you can just receive it on a weekly basis and check that one there. Personally, I don't find a lot of value in the digest, so my option is never. Down here, you also have the ability to choose uh, the frequency on the groups that you join. So same deal. Do you want an email for every post, daily digest, or weekly digest? And then down here, you also have the ability to control it on a per group basis. So maybe for the company group, you want to get an email on every post, but maybe for this customer group, you really don't ever need any emails there. So to save these settings, you just click save and the settings on this page is applied just for your individual user. So you don't, there isn't an area in Salesforce to control this for everyone in the company. This would only be for you and you alone. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar.